come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. The movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. We're totally ready for it, though. That's what makes it always between us and you. <laughs> Uh, these are the internet radio superstars. That's a lie. Not always. <laughs> Holly, <laughs> Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. I don't and know why tonight, that was so funny. <laughs> we watched a movie that was chosen by Sean. What celebratory viewing did we have tonight? We celebrated uh, all things Evil Dead tonight. Mm-hmm. We celebrated anniversaries of first picks. We celebrated anniversaries of movies that came out ten years ago. And movies that are Sean's out of this ten month. years ago, <laughs> what the, the, the Sean of ten years ago, the Sean's of yours, the yeah. Sean of it all, yes, yeah. the Sean's of yours. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yes, uh, we watched 2013's Evil Dead. Ooh, directed by Fede Alvarez. Ah, oh, uh-huh. interesting. I know. I love that dude. We like. I was like, we like. Yeah, we like, like Fede Alvarez. I love that dude. <laughs> we do so, indeed. Unless what? you've watched. In the spiders, which I have it. not, I and I refuse to. Wait, no, it's Kick the Hornet's Nest, no, Spider no, Web. No, no. no. Spider web. Web. Okay. It's the one that's based on the book that wasn't written, right? By, by yeah, right. The Lega sequel book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I read yeah. the book. It's not those three first three books, while lengthy, yeah. are really good. Yes, yeah. they are. And mm. the third one, or the fourth one, and the continuing search from there is just yeah, not. yeah. Mm. I've read them. Steve with, Larson, mm-hmm. right? Steve Larson, yeah, yeah, Larson. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. He died before the books were finished. Yes. Well, yeah, thing, yeah. this is a whole separate. <laughs> right. Well, he well, had we'll the manuscript form. Watch the girl with the dragon tattoo. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what? Um, Evil Dead? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So, yeah. connection. We, we like did, Mr. Alvarez. They can't all be winners. Yeah, yeah because uh, he did He did Evil Dead, I think it was his first major thing. Yeah, he did. Movie. He yeah. did, uh, uh, a sh- I think, a shorter film that was on the uh, uh, festival circuit called Panic Attack. It was that's there. what got him the job. Yeah, there was a Spanish Ooh, I want to see that. I know. And he signed up to uh, with Ghost House Pictures to produce. Some sci-fi film around $30, $40 million, and it ended, ended up doing this one as his first movie. Because they said, hey, we're thinking about doing a remake of The Evil right? Dead. Well, that had been... What a gift. And I guess... Jesus. Uh, well... And a curse, I guess. It but. ended up being a gift. Yeah. Sure, yeah. There's yeah. The pros and cons to it. I, I feel like... It's this Evil is, Dead. Tell me if I'm wrong here, but Alex Aja walked so Fede Alvarez could, could run, right? There's like it feels simil- like they pay- he paved there. the way for him because they talk to each other. Yeah, it yeah, feels like. and I love them both. Like they it's not a dig, but to each other yeah, and toss ideas. <laughs> they were yes. all together. They, yeah. Right, yeah, they have parallel careers, but right. like they I showed mean, each other weird yeah. drawings. And they're like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Well, it feels yeah because Anja. Right, it was The Hills Have Eyes. For, he did uh, the French movie uh, High, High Tension. Tension. Mm-hmm. High Tension. He did then Piranha. Hills have eyes. And then yeah, I did Piranha. Piranha. And yeah, Hills Have Eyes. And there was another Crawl. one. I thought. Crawl. Or no, Mirror. Crawl. Mirror. Oh yeah, Mirror. Oh. So nobody Crawl remembers. Was Crawl yeah. was really good. Oh yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I've seen parts of Mirrors. It didn't look like a. Yeah. Uh, was it good? I don't know. I never saw it. But I love that really. he just stuck okay. with horror. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was happy but about that. Crawl, yeah. Well, except the Nine Life of Louis Drex, which I saw, which I would not recommend. Yeah. Like I um, said, yeah. they can't all be winners. Yes. Be- <laughs> and Fady Alvarez, right? Let's see. He did Evil Dead. Then he did uh, Don't Breathe. Yep. Yes, which I. Really enjoy. Don't yeah, really, yeah. yeah it's very good. Mm-hmm. This is after Marvel offered him an unspecified movie. He's like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to have a lot of creative control over this. Yeah, I'm good for him. Well, don't yeah, right? I, I was, respect. Uh, Flawed that so man. He went to yeah. Don't breathe. Yeah, it's great. I like that movie. I mean, it's a. It's got Dylan Minnette in it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And okay. Jane Levy and from Jane this. Levy. Jane Levy from Stephen this. Lang. Yeah. Stephen Lang. Who could forget? Mm-hmm. And yep. uh, a very um, memorable turkey baster. Yep, and it's, they made a like sequel to yep. that, right? The Don't Breathe was successful enough that no, I didn't see the sequel. I didn't see it. Yeah. I, but he did. He didn't direct the sequel. Did no. he? he co-wrote it. Okay, but he didn't direct. Okay, yeah, yeah no, I haven't like seen it. It was a one-off, it. but it was really yeah. good. And then Girl in the Spider's good. Web, and now he's doing the new Alien movie. He did. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. an unconnected Alien movie. They say. Good. Okay. And it's going to so go like direct the streaming on Hulu, probably. No? It's going to Hulu. Okay. It's being yeah. made for Hulu, yeah, so it awesome. might be end up being a Prey. Hey, Prey, Prey, Prey was right, made for exactly. Hulu, and that was a great movie. They're closing true, the yeah. Hulu. Who knew? Hulu's closing <laughs> the gap yeah. on theatrical. Uh, Alien movies. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, on, on what is good enough for theatrical versus Hulu. Yeah. So. But hey, pray uh, convince me enough. So bring on the. But alien. also, yeah. Alien Covenant sucked. So I, you know, it could yeah. go either way. So yeah. let's let's make another movie named after a ship and then just <laughs> fucking tank it. Was it Alien Romulus? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Romulus. Um, like, uh, so good for you, Fade. Good uh, for you. You know, but I mean, I, uh, this was Seems to be um, doing what he wants. Yeah, I mean, like I know that um, uh, Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, and Robert Tappard had been trying yes. to remake Evil Dead. 
for years, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think because we actually like you're gonna have to go back through the archives, but ten years ago, right? We actually did uh, on the eve of uh, this movie's theatrical release, yes. we reviewed Evil Dead on yes. this show. Okay, and I didn't listen to that episode, so I can't remember. No, I haven't gone back. Any- that's too. <laughs> some- it's too far back. It really is. Some of them are too. Uh, that one's actually early enough. Where I can be like, ah, memories. <laughs> <laughs> but the, some of them are just like I can't go that far back and listen yeah. to myself. But yes, we did do it. And they were, if uh, memory serves, they they were trying to get it off the ground because I think the idea was that Sam Raimi is like, I mean, he's proud of Evil Dead, but at the same time, like, embarrassed by its filmmaking, right? Which we, what we see as the, the verve, the kind of sure. student yeah. film verve okay, that yeah. he brought to it, he's kind of like, well, you know, I'm a, like a real movie director now. And that He's like, kind we of had to do see, that. See, Oz, great and powerful. I'm a real movie director. Yeah. I think his okay. answer is like, we had to do this. This is all we could do. Even if we, I mean, we look at it now, it's just like, you did a lot. Mm-hmm. And it came out as a, you know, a classic. Oh, God, he inspired, but, like, amateur filmmakers. Lot. You know, or, well, amateur filmmakers. People who became, you know, filmmakers because right. they're like, if this guy can do it. And he was 23 years old. Mm-hmm. But that's, the, that that's just off. how the creative mind works. As you progress in your skill level, you look back at the stuff you did earlier yep. on and you see all the yeah. things you wish you could fix. I mean, sure. people oh, yeah, shit I'm on sure. George Lucas for doing that, but all creative people feel that way about their work. Oh, like, yeah. Sam Raimi looks true. at the Evil Dead yeah. in a completely different way that we'll never understand. I would have done all these things differently. And he always thought that this movie was uh, could be worth like updating and, and reimagining and doing something different with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's not um, because you know there, there's really Evil Dead is. I mean, five friends go to a cabin in the woods, <laughs> read a uh, you know like read an evil book and unleash demons that possess them all and they kill each other. The end. Really, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, basically it's a horror movie. Yeah. 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 Um, and so it's like, okay, you could probably do something with that. The the thing I remember at the time that this movie came out was like we had obviously had Sam Raimi had done Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. Yes. And those movies um, are always remembered for, you know, Bruce Campbell and his. Um, yeah, because mm-hmm. they're funny. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You know, I mean, up, Evil, Dead 2, yeah. <laughs> Evil Dead 2 is a horror movie, but it's also funny. And Army of Darkness is a comedy. That's mm-hmm. like an action right. comedy. Yeah. yeah. And so then there was the thought of like, well, what is the Evil Dead remake going to be like? What are they what are they going to do? And I remember Bruce Campbell, like, uh, would you know, when he give interviews, I would say, we know what you guys want. You want blood running down the screen. You want like unrelenting, you know, <laughs> because the first one was billed as like a grueling experience in, in, mm-hmm. in horror or terror. Yeah. Right. Uh, the most grueling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then there's like this high bar, like how, what are they going to do? And so they hire Fede Alvarez and we're like, oh, like, okay, this guy, uh, we don't know who he we is. We don't know right. who he is. We Which know nothing. Which wouldn't have yeah. inspired confidence in me as a, just a viewer. Just like, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what his background is. Maybe if you'd seen Panic Attack, his previous mm-hmm. movie, you'd have more confidence. But to me, it felt like during an era where we hired a lot of music video directors to uh, to direct a remake of a horror movie, and they all went to shit. Sam mm-hmm. Bear, like they were all looking yeah. at you, Sam yeah. Bear. Yeah. yeah, then like it never, it hasn't worked out. Yeah. Now he doesn't have that background, uh, but uh, no confidence did I have knowing this. No, because this was Who from would? the era yeah. of everybody's making short films and distributing them on YouTube yeah. or whatever, and they would get seen at that mm-hmm. point in time. Uh, Sign by, a contract with a production company. Yeah, and, like yeah. they'd get emails like, you know, your inbox would all of a sudden blow up the day after you posted the thing, and yep. there'd be like some talent agency, you know. So that leads to Ghost House and this offer to make this movie. Now, he also co-wrote this, right? So yeah. this was part of his pitch, I assume, to like update Evil Dead, yeah. right? But the thing is, they're going to go and make a horror movie, like a straight out horror movie. They're like, okay, you know what people really liked about the first Evil Dead? It's unrelenting, uh, you know, <laughs> grueling horror. Yes, now we're going to make it more unrelenting. <laughs> what if we take all the humor out of the movie? Yeah. Which sounds like a terrible idea. It does sound paper, like a terrible right? idea when you're coming from Evil mm-hmm. Dead. Yeah. But to just play get... it completely yeah. straight. But I mean, it... if you're going to do something new. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I feel like that's what the intent was to do something mm-hmm. different but still keep the spirit mm-hmm. so taking out the comedy is something different it is something new yeah well i mean i guess the first one was was trying to be like and i mean it just to some extent it does work it's just it you know the 
uh, time, I guess, has made its effects and all that stuff kind of yes. look rough, but it is trying to be like, you know, a full out horror movie. Yeah. Um, and so this one's just like the modern version of like, well, if you could do it with a budget, you know, and a skilled <laughs> crew, what could you actually do? Um, Tanks Sam Raimi did like keep the, you know, the zaniness in Bruce Campbell and Ash, right? Because mm-hmm. Ash was also like, you know, I mean, he's like one of the great horror movie characters yeah. you know yeah uh the guy with the the chainsaw hand right and the boomstick, and the boomstick. right mm-hmm. but he was able to keep him uh in ash versus evil dead the tv series mm-hmm. right it was so good if you guys haven't watched that tv series i'm getting there. watch it i'm slowly it's moving so towards watching the rest of okay the well let me know when you actually get to watch it this is this is such such a sean thing like you're you're gonna watch like 10 minutes of it and then six months later you'll watch the next 10 minutes no of the no first episode. i'll watch 10 minutes of it and six months later i'll binge the whole thing and be like Have you <laughs> well they're short this? they're only half hour episodes yeah and doesn't they're, matter. And they're only like I 12 episode yeah. seasons or something like yeah. that. There's only three seasons. So. Three seasons. Yeah, yeah Colin, and he hasn't finished Tombstone. Yeah, That's yeah, right. still hasn't finished Tombstone. So. And the first episode <laughs> yeah. is directed by Sam Raimi. Yeah. So for all intents uh. and purposes in my book, like oh, that yeah. is Evil Dead 4. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Bringing it's so good. Bruce Campbell back. So I guess that's the thing that like now, you know, we've we've lived with the idea that there's an Evil Dead remake out there mm-hmm. that doesn't have Ash in it. Groovy. Yeah, well, okay. okay. It's weird that it works. <laughs> I don't, it shouldn't which, work, but it, it does. It makes question why that's in there, but whatever. Well, nice there, there was, there was the a lot of lines like that that shouldn't be Oh, in no, here, just, just the end of the movie. Yeah. Like, at mm-hmm. the full end of the credits, oh, you know, yeah, just him going groovy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like it, yeah. but I'm just like, what purpose is it? It's, it's like... Um, it's almost like the uh, 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 production company logo. Yeah. Like it's something it should like pop that. up underneath them and just be like, groovy <laughs> <Yeah>. productions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there is like a bunch of, I noticed, um, you know, in the sound mix, uh, you can hear mm. lines from the original Evil Dead, like yes. kind of, uh, you know, it's like Phantom under, the, right yeah. under They're laid stuff under like all the yeah. other stuff. Yeah. Like a residual haunt. Yeah. 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 Which I dig it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do that. I mean, they're giving a decent, you know, homage back to what made that original movie work. There's recreations of certain scenes, certain lines of dialogue, certain, you know, like, mm-hmm. I mean, it is a remake. Yes. You know. But I have a question. When does this movie take place? Um, It seems it, undefined. It, it is. Well, it is more modern day, I think. But uh, not. It doesn't seem 2013. That car is from the 90s that they drive up. No, it doesn't seem 2013. But the Jeep's newer. But there's, I'll but say, there's no I cell phones why. or anything 2009. either. I don't know why. But they have. He's got a, <laughs> He's got a, uh, the automatic opener for the car. Right. Um, no cell I mean, phones, though. You're, I think we're all thrown off by um, uh, Lou Taylor Pucci, who's one of the stars in this. Dressing, at, I mean, he wore, uh, he's got uh, long hair, he's got the old glasses. Yeah. He looks he like he's out of the Texas he Chainsaw does. Yeah, he does. He does yeah. indeed. And he, yeah. he did that in order to, like, uh, pay yeah. homage to the mm-hmm. older movies and everything, mm-hmm. so he did that on a purpose. There's which just a distinct a, lack of technology in this right. movie. It does give a timeless he looks quality like to the, this. He looks like the nerdy dude that gets into a fight in uh, Dazed and Confused. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Any? Yeah. No. Any I got nothing. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I got nothing for you, Howie. Yeah. You haven't seen Days and Confused, well, one of the have, seminal films of our era? I okay. watched yeah. that so many times growing up. I don't think I've up. seen it. Good grief. Oh I don't God. know. Okay. Um, Moving on. <laughs> so this movie does make some departures mm. uh, in its opening scenes. Uh, well, this Ooh, was the opening the- scene is good. Tell me why. Well, we get an opening scene where uh, we open up on a, a woman wandering through the woods. And so we're like, ooh, we're already offset on this. And then she gets captured. It, it's the wonderfulness about the opening scene is it's a flip on what your expectation should be. We do that a lot through this movie, yes. I thought, which is kind of its strength. I think so, too. Um, we get into it where we think that um, a woman, it feels like a woman has escaped from her captors. And at this point, they've recaptured her, brought her back down to uh, the basement of this house. And they feel like maybe religious cultists, like they believe in a certain thing mm-hmm. and that they found that their uh, this man's daughter has been impure. And the only way we can save you is if we burn you alive. It but feels, there's also dead cats. We should yeah. dead cats yeah, on the scene yeah, like yeah. that. It's very like black magic. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And there's this woman in the corner speaking a different language, mm-hmm. looking over the book, like mm-hmm. like demanding things, pounding on tables. And so you feel like it's it's um you feel like they're on the wrong. Like mm-hmm. they're they're the ones that there's a danger coming from them. Mm-hmm. And it's slowly revealed through the character as she pleads for her life that I mean, we know what movie we're getting into. It's mm-hmm. an evil dead yeah. movie. And so she it's slowly revealed that we have a deadite. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. In our midst. We still have deadites. Still I guess deadites. that's the thing that, like, Evil Dead has. Because I thought, uh, you know, it's like you've had, like, I mean, actual, like, demon people running around, you know, just killing people. Like, Evil Dead is the the, the go-to for that, yeah. right? I mean, like, mm-hmm. demons would be, like, the next thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm even thinking about, like, some of the look of what they do with them. I mean, it's just, uh, contact lenses with oh, red yeah. eyes and you know a lot of uh, body injury and yeah you know, just I mean, I always, sticky hair uh, but, uh, i mean it's I a great this, look it is uh, and there is a connection to like demons as you say because i always think of what's her name um uh goretta goretta who oh yeah does yeah, her yeah, transformation yeah, 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 in the bathroom yeah, yeah, everything yeah. oh yeah. it's like haunting <laughs> but with the eyes and the teeth and everything yeah which is kind of interesting. Now the new one is called Evil Dead Rise, yes. and the, the, uh, <laughs> we've seen the trailer, and it doesn't look like it's going to be a possessed uh, apartment building, which is the plot of, of Demons Two. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, is that what they're doing? But yeah, so now they've spun this off. It's ten years later. We're doing <laughs> Evil Dead Rise, right? Uh, and which they're getting. Uh, I think they're getting into. Um, uh, they found a way to. Cont- they can continue the series without it having to have connection because you just like the book ends up somewhere. That's and all then, you need to do. And then do, chaos yeah. ensues. Mm-hmm. And you can do, I mean, you can make different versions of the book throughout that. Cause it's like, it's, mm-hmm. it's almost like somebody's retelling of a story. It's like, and then the book ended up here. Yeah. Mm. It's a big book. Yeah. Yeah. Many chapters. You can get a lot yeah. of stuff out of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably a lot of demons yeah. in there. Who yeah. knows? This is the Necronomicon <laughs> Ex yes. Mortis, right? Yes. Without a face this time, but still scary. <laughs> I know. Mean, so they've redesigned it. Tell me about the, uh, what's the, uh, what's the book look like this it, time? How they it made like it? like the book from Hocus Pocus without the eye. I mean, it kind of does. Yeah. It is stitched together skin. In uh, a leather bounding, the leather yeah. is human skin. In a garbage bag with barbed wire. Yeah, right, it. barbed wire locked yeah. up. Yeah. I like thought that. was like, uh, yeah, so, so I mean, the logic of it is a little bit fuzzy with me. These cultists, right, burn this woman, yeah. this mm-hmm. deadite in the basement. To purify her. And yeah. we've seen, as we've seen in that beginning, they have done it to someone else. Yep. Because mm-hmm. there is a, a former victim down there, which. Yeah, the guy who's burned. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Ugh, that's haunting. Yeah, but he's like with them and he survived the burning and he, with, quote unquote with them <laughs> based on his gaunt uh, thousand yard stare. Yeah. That seems creepy like, too. Through this I, mean, before. She, I would imagine if he started going uh, uh, that would have been creepier. Well because he they they set them up so they look like they're the villains but it yes, turns out they're they the heroes of this scene and like the girl has killed her mother but doesn't remember it or whatever she's oh, pleading oh, yeah. with the father who's there. I mean, it's a pretty effective scene. It's and good. You know, you, mm-hmm. They burn her alive. And they smash do. Cut she's on fire. I like Evil that opening. Dead. Mm-hmm. Like that got me. Like, yeah. Oh, good way to open a movie. It's a great cold open. Mm-hmm. So um, the book, yeah, th- like you said, when they, they it's going to be found later. But what happened? So after this burning, right? Mm. They're like, we're going to take this book, which we can't destroy. It doesn't burn. So we're going to. Somebody has written in English all over it. Yeah, they've scratched out. Uh, translations they've written all over it. Don't read this book. Burn this book. Don't uh, say it. Don't right. Think basically, it, don't, yeah. like, why are you reading this book, you idiot? Get out of and here. And then you cover it in a trash bag, and then you wrap it in barbed wire, and you leave it in the basement. Why didn't they bury it? Right. Yeah. So we don't have a. I mean, that's very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If it's that dangerous, you figure I feel that you would. It would find its way back. I mean. Maybe. Maybe, but yeah. yeah. We don't know that it didn't, I suppose. It crawled back there. Sure. Somehow. I just I just have so many practical questions throughout this movie. Like who yes. like do they have a garbage service? Because at one point he takes out the garbage. And yeah, I like, love do this. they have waste management? Who's that taking comes out care of this dog that's been living here? Well, they bring the dog. Did they? Yeah. I th- well, she acted like she hadn't seen that dog in forever, and he I was like, the, "He brought the dog." I think okay. the dog lives with him. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, okay. He brought the dog. So who are, well, you're, you're, dog. you're talking about people here, but who who are these people? And what is their relation to each other? Not Ash. <laughs> yeah. Not Ash. David. Yeah. David. Okay, but David. Yes. Uh, where's the blue? Yeah. He's so got the like, outfit. Yeah. So we can see that he's supposed to be Ash. He's supposed yeah. to be Ash. But again, they're going to subvert this as the movie yeah. goes on, which I kind of like. So, uh, all right. Yes. So uh-huh. There's David. There's David. His sister, Mia. Mia, who is Jane Levy in this mm-hmm, movie. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got. Nurse. Nurse. <laughs> Natalie. Oh, no. Sorry. I don't remember. No, nurse. Um, Olivia. Right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's Lou Taylor Pucci's character. Who is? That's a good ooh. question. Eric? He was a math teacher. I know that much. Eric. I shouldn't know. Started with um, Eric. It started with an E. And then there was Natalie. Natalie, who was David's, David's girlfriend. girlfriend. Which okay, did they say this was the first time 
the girlfriend was meeting his sister? Mm -hmm. Uh Why? Okay, why the fuck would you bring your girlfriend (laughs) for the first time meeting your sister is she's going to come down off heroin for three days. Do you want to stay with her? Like, yeah, you want what? You want to come meet my sister and help her go through with withdrawals? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. That this was is a terrible Sounds like idea. a great weekend. A great Jesus. Weekend. Uh, we have Mia, David, Eric, Olivia, Natalie, and together they, f- the first letters of all their names spelled demon. Oh, I oh, love it. I love it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, so there you go. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> They're also the Delta Olds 88 makes an early appearance. It yes, does. The yes. thing that Sam Raimi has put in all of his movies and mm-hmm. it's Evil Dead Lore. It gets a so. whole season in the TV show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it becomes yeah. a character. Yep. Nice. Um, so I guess this is the addition to the, this is how they're going to update it, right? Mm. I mean, the first movie really doesn't have much of by way of a plot. It's No, we no. go to the woods and have fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're going to a cabin in the woods. Drug and sex and rock and roll, man. I think the device for getting them there in this movie is a good change. I agree. I think it I think makes a lot of sense. It's a good way to get them there. Yeah. It's a good way to um it's a good way to have a character go crazy and the other characters be like, You'll be okay. Good gaslighting set up. Really yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. And it's it, good excuses for that. I like, like that they're comfortably seated in adulthood too. Like they're not high school, they're not like early college. Like they seem like they're like mid twenties, right. late twenties. One, I mean, one, one is a, a teacher. A uh, yeah. So like, just like we, um, I like aging them up a bit like that. Yeah, you know? it is nice. It's like, can you imagine being in that pitch? It's like, okay, so what's very close to demon possession? Drug addiction. Um, yeah. Withdrawals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. withdrawals. Yeah. Withdrawals in your thirties. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You're in your thirties and everything already hurts, and then right. you're an addict. Which is which is great for this because you don't know i mean uh, you don't know what somebody the length someone will go to get out of a situation in which they're in pain yeah, yeah. which turns which flips well and <laughs> it flips well into demon possession who knew mm-hmm. but there we go Works, well yeah. to be honest with you when i heard that that was what it, i'm like oh no not again you know it seemed like a horror trope or it seems like okay we the, the reason that we have to be there is we got it this is a crisis intervention sure yeah. mm-hmm. And then it's like, well, then you're going to blur the lines. We can't tell yeah. if it's demon possession or not. But I was actually kind of like, even though I was kind of like, well, you're leaning on an obvious kind of crutch. I thought they did enough character work that yes. I was like sold on it by the time you got into the movie. It actually, you know, it worked on me. I guess mm-hmm. there's, oh, yeah. there's a history of like, you know. The mom had mental problems. It was right. in a, you know, and Jane Levy took care of her and David wasn't there. He was well, getting a it, job. It and- makes your main character an unreliable narrator, right? You know, if she's yeah, in the throes of a withdrawals and addiction, yeah, but she's guess, an unreliable narrator. But you know, that's going to yeah. happen as soon yeah. as they say, like, right. you know, it's like, well, you're here and you're going to be going through withdrawals. It's like, okay, they're not going to be able to tell if she's, you know, they're right. not going to initially believe. <laughs> right. Until the, the, the front door whips <laughs> open. And it's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to die tonight. <laughs> <laughs> then you kind of come like, okay, like, could be right. like, all right. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's one dude who's going like, I've had weekends like that. Mm-hmm. Just like, my concern, like. oh man, but hearing the uh, the whole addiction thing like on paper, my concern is if this movie was made now, it would be like an A24 movie where it's like a metaphor. Right. And it would be really like be- highbrow elevated and it would just be like weepy, miserable mm-hmm. addiction allegory. And I'm just like, I'm glad that we got this one in before mm-hmm. that. I, just, um, happened. I think well, we need to ding a bell for uh, uh, Michaela's trashing of A24. Uh, is, uh, you know <laughs> we I'm all right. have bells, That's, so I'm going to give this I'm one right, to you. Every, that is definitely every, on the bingo card. That is definitely on the bingo card. <laughs> every horror movie is about grief and mourning and shit now. Oh, yeah. You know well, it's exactly I, yeah, what Yeah, I saw be. someone tweet the other day. Yeah. Yeah. The, the horror movies used to be about you know yeah. creatures running after you. Now it's about the five stages of grief yeah. and yeah. trauma. Yeah. 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 I know. It's been that way for a while. But I see that even when I watch this, to be honest with you. It's like that's what they were. But it's not as heavy handed as. Right. Well, movies now are I would say plus you get Blood Rain and, kind of, yeah. and it's still uh, yeah. a trashy movie it, it goes movie trashy yeah. I think yeah. is yeah. what kind of saves it because yeah they, they do <laughs> going like, trashy saves yeah it, it's, yeah, it's, it's not preachy it does yeah, yeah. going trashy can it's save a, your movie yeah. they move past and it makes it a freak show movie they move, they move past the addiction part pretty quick yeah. Yeah. yeah because the thing is if it if it doesn't go trashy it becomes a message movie you know and yeah. it becomes like it's talking this down to you you right. know yeah but this is the like I want demons. I don't want to be saved. Yeah, I'm not here to learn a lesson. I'm not here to learn a lesson. (laughs) But this is the filmmakers, the writers. They're basically just going like, okay, this is going to give us an opportunity where, uh, you know, because it's like, well, why wouldn't they leave? Well, they can't leave because they've devoted themselves to keeping her on the straight and narrow, Mm -hmm. right, through the detox. And so it sets up all these kind of rules 
that is going to confine them to this right. And space. it gives you backstory of that she's done this before. We've mm-hmm. been in similar situations. After eight hours, she skipped out. And she was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this. So I they, like, they so feel like the, they've been in this situation before. Yes. And the, 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 the setup and payoff, there's a bunch of them. There's yeah. Yeah. earlier, like somebody has kicked the door into the cabin, so he's got to use a nail gun to fix it. Okay, yep. that's an easy one. Uh, she... Jane Levy's character, Mia, had overdosed before, and that's why they're all like, okay, this is, we have to do this. We're sticking with it. Yeah. Because the last time she, she had to be, she died and she had to be defibrillated. Yep. So they set that up also. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I like these little yeah, things. Right. Like, yeah. oh, okay. All right. You know, it didn't just mm-hmm. come out of nowhere. The things at the end. You've- no, right. And this is like the last stand for, for um, that character mm-hmm. and these characters about how they feel about her. It's so like characters saying, like, we can't lose you again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they, she flushes all her drugs down the well, and the Can you night flush a well sets, <laughs> sets in. <laughs> Just asking. I did kind of like the line when he's like, "There's going to be some slugs having a party tonight." Yeah, that right? yeah, was funny. Oh my god, that was pretty funny. Well, the next this is slugs part two. <laughs> Heroin yeah. slugs. Oh but then god. she's I'd freaking out right because uh, she is smelling something that nobody else can smell, yes. and so this takes us down into the cellar. Mm. And of course, you know that this is where it starts towing that line of like, is she just losing it because of withdrawals, or mm-hmm. because nothing has really happened yet as far as the demon possession stuff goes. Mm. Mm-hmm. But down in the cellar, we find out that we are in the basement that we saw at the beginning of the movie. This is where the witchcraft happened, mm-hmm. yep. where the burn pillar is, and where the demon Burning. book resides. Yes. And the dead cats. Dead so cats. These, Not my fault. Which, okay, we've but decided. How recently? Don't give me that look. How much time passes between the cold open and right. this moment? A fair question. Feels like a lot of time. Well, but they say they smell burning hair. I think like, that and, it's baked into the wall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the cats aren't entirely decomposed. Yeah, that's that's true, I'm yeah. like, what, how how much time is? Yeah, I know. It gives you questions like, uh, how did they how did they know about this cabin? These uh, people who you know burned the, the people little, in the beginning. Yeah, because apparently they just broke into somebody else's yeah. cabin. I mean, this is a domesticated place. It's owned by uh, Mia and her brother and their parents. Based on the pictures on the wall. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes. Yeah, so there's they've got family heirlooms around, so the opening people just found a place to go, <laughs> and I guess, I mean, and probably. yeah, there doesn't seem to be a driveway, so that begs no. the question of how they get their garbage taken out. Maybe they're going to put it in the know. car, no. and they were going to take it back uh, to the city uh, with what, them. Where would you, you guys grow up? You burn your trash in the backyard. You burn it in the backyard. What? I never burned my trash. I'm not saying I did. But people burn trash. Like okay. and being on the woods, if you had trash, there's a burn pit. You just burn your trash. Yeah, burn it in the backyard. And then yeah, that's the thing again. people do. Um. So Mia, yeah. right? Okay. So this is basically yeah, the Lou Taylor Pucci, um, Eric, right? Yes, the teacher finds, book. finds this book. It's full of wood carvings. I guess that's the thing that like the first one had a kind of stylistic thing to it. This one. The art style looks more modern than what it's supposed to be. This sure, ancient yeah. Sumerian book. But it's book. good. It, it, I it like has, the artistry of this book. Yeah. It's no, creepy. It's, it's a cool book. I just question why, if you open a book and the very first page says, leave this book alone. <laughs> yeah. Why do you continue? That was wrapped in barbed wire. Well, wrapped yeah. in barbed wire. Why do you con- why do you proceed to read it out loud? <laughs> He's a teacher. Well, He's inquisitive. I'm curious, and I will look at it, but I'm not going to sit there and read it out loud. I don't read anything out loud to myself. No. Ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, do, I don't ever just, like, hold up read an article. This. Read this, Michaela. And just, I just don't ever, like, you know, leisurely read out loud the only to thing myself. I usually, the only thing I usually read out loud is if I'm working on something, and I read it out loud to myself to see how it sounds. You've never been stuck in, like, an ancient temple and read the hieroglyphics out loud? <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's it. Like, how do you know? Not like, recently. How do you compare no. them to the, you know, what other people <laughs> Of it. Wait, who's got the Evil Dead incantation? Oh, I don't. Come on, they've done this in for how many movies over how many years now? I haven't seen them a lot of times. Okay, I don't have the third word. It's, yeah, uh, I was gonna say, give me. I was like, I'm time. sorry. Do you know it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it uh, Conda? Conda Estrada. Conda. I know Conda. Something. Uh, yeah. Sure. Or Conda's the last one. <laughs> okay. I Conda. Don't know uh, they did it. Whatever <laughs> they they did it very well. Conda. In this movie. The know. editing in this movie, yeah, I think, is great. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's very good. The sound mix and the sound design and the sound editing. The production is also design. Great. So much very fog. creepy. So many lights yes. and fog. The yes. movie's all just the techni- gross. Mm-hmm. All the technical stuff in this movie is done very yeah. well. Yeah. It and looks it, expensive. It's a $17 mm-hmm. million dollar movie. Okay. Filmed okay. in yep. Australia. Sure. I believe. Doubling yeah. for. I was like, is this whole thing a set in all indoor? Set. Really? Yeah, indoor? Wow. I thought so. 
Because then we can control everything yeah. that's going on. Yeah. As soon as they pull up to the cabin, I'm like, oh. Well, the, the the thing, the giveaway is that every every time you look in any direction, there's always like a mound. It's perfectly yeah. lit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you can't see over the mound, so you yes. can't see yeah. like so in the you distance. Can't see it's farther like, out. That's yeah. how you do it. Um. All right. So Mia, uh, in the throes of um, you know, withdrawal, heads out into the rainy woods. Yeah. At she's the been same doing a time, lot of that, walking around, just walking in circles because mm-hmm. she's been screaming. For the past whatever hours about, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the pain and everything. And so he reads the book, the incantation on the book, and this lets go the spirits of the evil dead, which then take possession of her. Now, yes. I have a question, because in this movie, the evil dead is personified. Mm-hmm. Um, we see a woman. Yes. A uh, demon possessed deadite. Somebody in the woods. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is it? Is she seeing the de- the demon possessed version of herself? I think so. I think there's more information here that you're not revealing, Colin. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I it feels like it based on the discussion we've had. It feels like it because it doesn't. Are we asking? Because that's not the same character as the end abomination, right? I think it is. Is it? I think so. The one, the the one that Mia sees. Yep. Okay. She sees it. It takes possession of her, mm-hmm. and then uh, when it's cast out, then it comes up in the in the end okay right yes all right i'll go with it's that. let out because we find out from the book that five must be sacrificed before the abomination can come out there's also yes. a head demon which we think is the devil himself who's always watching and he's coming oh i thought you were talking about like a head demon like yeah head. A head who demon. knows in the evil dead universe. the top guy the guy with the candle in his head oh yeah, represented yeah, yeah. The, he was represent- he was like all black yeah in the book. yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool because mm-hmm. i don't think that i think book. that's uh new to the mythology right i think so um so there's when when they show the like the demon entity like flying through the woods how do you picture it flying is it like supermaning it (laughs) or is it like i think uh, it's like you know that weird jump it does at the end i I think think it's yeah however you think a dementor flies oh i feel like she's just like on an invisible skateboard yeah. <laughs> oh no, I'm thinking feet off the ground, full, <laughs> full towards. Right. That's yeah. why I'm like, is she like head first? Is she like supermaning it? No. She like, like we said arms back, arms back, yeah. fully going on, like screaming. Like, <laughs> really? Like, this is how interesting. Yeah. I always thought it was like uh, you have the point of view of wind or something. Uh, the evil I mean, but that is the well, good, yeah. that is like the essence of it. I like that. It's it's yeah. kind of like the that. Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. she sees it in the woods. So yeah, I'm but this movie we actually see it. I'm, yeah. assuming, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming that's what's flying around. I prefer, I prefer, I prefer not to personify it by a Superman just to keep the scariness to it, but I understand what you're saying. So like, this, uh... <laughs> right? I wonder about the physicality of the flying I just, demon. I have questions, and it's not what you think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we've also got some questions about who plays this character because, um, oh uh, yeah, you you have stumbled upon uh, uh, a query. Yeah, but this could be just uh, because we just looked it up there. Abomination Mia is the credited as, uh, I want to say Rebel Wilson, but that wasn't it. it was, uh, <laughs> no, that no is it's Wilson. not Rebel Wilson. Wow. <laughs> I can't remember the name now. Randall? <laughs> Randall Wilson. Randall uh, Randall something, yes. And I'm like, it's a dude? And then it was like, you look it up and it says actress and it has pictures of Jane Levy. And yeah. Randall Wilson has only done one movie and it's The Evil Dead. Don't know. So I know. Is that just like uh, a... In joke or something? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on it's there. Weird. We couldn't is there a comment track it. That, there is, but I haven't listened to it, so mm. that could probably answer many things. Maybe. Um, I was going to say, one viewing of the commentary track probably answers <laughs> all this shit. Yeah. But yes. Um, if any of our listeners have watched the commentary and you know this answer and you're screaming it out loud, feel free to write in. Yeah. Yes, sir, please do, because we don't know. Um, Saturday Show at Yahoo.com. <laughs> There's a scene in the original Evil Dead, which is widely known, I think that movie is known for, and that is a rape in the woods that happens at the, I was going to say the hands, at the, the, by yeah, tree the branches. Branches. Uh, Via tree. Via a tree, yeah. right? Yes. And this movie recreates it in a way that like... I forgot I, about this scene. You know, they could have left this out. I would have yeah. been fine with that. Nah, this is the scene. It's this the is, it's icon- like really, iconography of Evil Dead. But the thing that they did here, so this, I guess as I was watching it tonight and how they cut it together, it's like she's running through these, it's not a thicket. Uh, it's I don't a, know bramble. It yeah. a bramble. Some type of bramble. And like she'll get caught. And so her hand is caught on it. And then she stumbles and, you know, so now she's being strangled because mm. she like, you know, went into one and she has to claw herself free and then 
she ends up pulling herself up and right. her legs are tangled. As but well. you don't actually see them moving. I guess no. that's what I liked about it. it was like the distinction was in the first one. You know, you, you have, you know, that backward shots of, you know, that you wrapping did in, in yeah. the 80s. Yeah. And branches wrapping around you. This one's like um, more subtle that way. Right. It's like yeah. we know what's happening. Yeah. But you don't actually see the forest come alive and grab right. her. Um, that it's was like you cool. think you see it, but it, you can't right. tell. Yeah. yeah, but there's so much of like other uh, 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 roots and branches and stuff. Just, yeah, uh, you can't tell if it's moving until we see the one move. Yeah, well, that's vomited out of. So it oh, looks like a yeah. branch. It's really gross. It's gross. Mm-hmm. The abomination gross. vomits up this thing that looks all black and slimy, but it yeah. turns out it's all spiky and it looks like tree branches. It does. And yeah. it crawls up inside. It's kind of like the head of one of the mitts from There's Nothing Out There, but then it turns into tree branches. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of gross. But it's, oh, very I mean, gross. The, what, yeah. this movie's hard fucking core. The I mean, sound design a- <laughs> alone during this scene is just like, ugh. Yeah. And then, the, the score to this movie is just so loud. Like I mean, I, is, I like it. I mean, there's a compliment. There's but li- yeah, there's literally sirens incorporated into the sound. Okay. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's a klaxon alarm or what, what you call that? it. It's like, like one of those things. That, yeah, yeah, the there's, long one. Yeah. Yeah. There's literally like an alarm. Yeah. Like yeah, I like that yeah. sound. That sound is one of those sounds. I think that just kind of plays on your psychology. Like yes. you yeah. don't like that sound, and they use it. All it's like. That's the theme of like when there's a dead eye in the room. It, yeah. It like goes off. And it, sh- it, it shows. I thought about, and this is very random, but it shows up in another movie Gremlins. At the end of Gremlins, when the a stripe has been melted and there's bubbling up on the floor, you hear a. Like a tornado alarm? Like, yeah. like in this? You hear a noise like this, and it. it's the only thing I can think of during that. Huh. It's weird. Again, it's a random connection. I don't but, remember that. That's uh, crazy. Silent Hill uses it, but not as score. That's no, why I thought yeah. this was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Roke Banos is the guy who did the music. This I think he's done all Fede Alvarez's movies and gotcha. mm-hmm. a bunch of other stuff. It's um, really creative. He's done yeah. Guillermo del Toro yeah. movies. I think uh, like that crazy. makes he's sense. He's doing well. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's like whimsical, but creepy and lo- but and loud. So loud it's all the time. Jarring. Like, it's yeah. very jarring. And yeah, there's a sadness to it. I think like mm-hmm. the opening theme has a you know, when the car when you see the car driving in. There's a sadness yeah. that I didn't mm-hmm. kind of expect from you know Evil Dead, but right. it's like okay, this is going to be a serious you know, right. which we get yeah. later on when after the burial and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, possessed Mia now burns herself in the shower. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oof. I yeah. love that that bubble pop. The bubble on her face. that's yeah. so gross. Oh, yeah, that's so so good. Good. <laughs> They're like, we got to oh. get her to a hospital. So good. <laughs> Yeah, I do like the devices they use too. They I do actually try to leave, and the things that like keep them from actually leaving the cabin. I yeah. think it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the first one, if I remember, when Bruce Campbell drives to the bridge, it's uh, busted and looks like a big hand. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, mm-hmm. it's come up and everything. Yeah. In this one, it's there's been so much rain that it's swept the bridge away. Yeah. It's like okay, we got to go back to the cabin again, where the horror is just going to keep <laughs> on keeping on. Yep. Um. I feel like I'd just wait in the car. Yeah. You know. Right. Well, mm-hmm. they, I mean, I guess there, <laughs> there's so, a lot of choices that could have been mm-hmm. made throughout this yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> just just sit in that car. Like mm-hmm. first 10 minutes of being attacked by something in the cabin. You're like, I'm going to sit in the car for the rest of the movie. Or, yeah. you know, when you the see the trap door with blood, maybe stop there. Yeah. There are certain things. Yeah. You're just like, oh, that, bad sign. That's a big red flag. That's, that was the big problem I had with Eric is like he saw the trap door with blood. He saw the dead cats. Then you see the cats. Then, then he sees the cats and then still is like, got to open that book. Got to read it out loud. Like it's, but it's, it's the, stretching it's like, credibility. What are these people doing with those cats and those burnings? <laughs> you want to know. Again. Yeah. yeah you want to know, but you don't have to read it out loud. He's yeah. too curious. True. Curiosity killed the cat. Mm-hmm. All those and satisfaction brought him back. Bum, bum, bum. Um, I think that's how it goes. Anyway, he killed the cat. All the cats. In the movie. Yeah, um, it's a lot of curiosity. But okay, so Eric is basically like he just keeps on saying what the audience is thinking, you know, because everybody's like, "It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine." He's like, "What are you He's talking like, I don't about? Think it's going to be fine. It's not going to be fine." She just cut her arm off. Um, <laughs> you've got. Um, uh, Olivia, who is our medical uh, representative, nurse, yes. and so she's you know treating everything as this I'm is how we... her the, the exact stuff she'd get in a hospital. Uh, 
That's her attitude. <laughs> the exact same care. It's yes. Like, really? I don't think really? so. Except Just... when her suicide attempts or whatever, like, well, you should have seen this coming. So there's that kind of uh, dramatic uh, yeah. Yeah. tension between them. She's not them. giving her the same care. In the hospital, they give her an IV, an IV bag to keep her hydrated. Right, see? Right. And, you know, so, a comfortable bed and a gown. Right? And keep you away from and the shotguns. It would be and, sterile you know. and not a moldy old cabin. <laughs> Probably right. temperature controlled, at least. No yeah. rain. This is like our first big logic issue with this movie, right? Is that no one pre Preemptively came to this cabin to make sure it was, you know, still standing. Were, even right, we're gonna you know? we're gonna stage uh, uh, an intervention and, and make sure she gets clean over three days in a cabin we haven't yeah. been doing. I'll at, tell you at right least now, ten years. I'll tell you right now. If I'm ever an addict, <laughs> do not take me to a crusty you know what, you old cabin. No? no, no, we'll take you to like a nice hotel. Thank you. <laughs> what, you know, I'm pretty sure we'd drive them. Be well, like, no, we'll you'd good see Airbnb. And be like, okay, Thank, I'll yeah. get clean. Yeah. Just don't take me to this. Just cabin. Somewhere with a big old bathtub. I, I was gonna say we'll yeah. get an Airbnb with like a hot tub or a sauna, so <laughs> yes! you can just sweat it out. Thank right? You. Why can't we overcome our addictions in comfort? Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The celebrities do it. Yeah, I'm just saying. They do. And they all end up fine. She's a nurse. He's a teacher. Like. They can get better than a crusty old <laughs> yeah. cabin. Come on. True. Well, the madness begins when oh. Mia pukes all over Olivia and gets so her gross. all possessed. There's too much puke in this it's, movie for me. Like, it's, there, I would be, I'd be puking for the next five minutes if someone had puked that much on me. Oh, and, and yeah. I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so grossed out if it was just like the bloody puke, but the fact that there's still like bits there's in it. There's bits. <laughs> That's what really well, gets bits, me. But they might as well have been corn. Oh That's why the God, effects guys so in this movie gross. had fun. A plus. Oh. A plus oh. plus. Oh, yeah. There's a well, bunch uh, of pussy stuff when somebody gets her hand bit, I think. Uh, oh, Jesus. The hand bit. The, yeah. Like Between the thumb and the index finger, yeah, the that soft area. Oh, and she God. squeezes it, and the black goo like, uh, comes out of it in a little bit. Like, you know, all the effects guys for this movie were like, what can we do to impress Sam? Yeah. Like, that was their goal. Probably. We well, yeah. want to impress him. But the other thing is, it doesn't reek of CG. No. Uh, where I think you uh, know Fanny you. Alvarez w- yeah. went into consideration. He's like, as an honor to Sam and what he did with his first one, it's like, we will do practical. Yeah. yeah. Well, you. I mean, because you know there's CG happening, because the one girl so- saws her arm off with a, uh, you know, like the what it, rotisserie saw or yeah, whatever. That's right. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, that yeah character- but, but after that, she's missing an arm. She is. So yeah. and there you is know a, that there's... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, when, yeah, a when, CG she's, bleeding when scene. she's standing there in in the it living room off. with both like arm, yeah, stumps and she turns dangling. around and it's bleeding. I was, that it's was like, the only part that I was really like, I see the CG, but it didn't. Right, and me I think that's lot. not in the yeah. theatrical cut. Maybe for those specific reasons, because you see it and you're like, that's not like I see it. Yeah, yeah. I see the the CGI. Wait, yeah. there's a there's. There's something other than the theatrical cut? There what? is. What do we watch tonight? We watch the unrated cut of mm-hmm. Evil Dead 2013. So this is kind of weird. Are we because, starting um, over? <laughs> 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 Directed by. <I'm> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they like, so the movie came out in theaters and then there was this, um, I guess it showed uh, on, in I don't know if it was the BBC. No, it was it Channel showed, 4. Yeah. In... Uh, England, I believe. Somewhere, yes. And it ran as an extended version, and everybody was like, what? The the version that was on was extended, so you either saw it then, or you didn't see it. And then it was like a year Mm -hmm. before it actually came out uh, on, I think you could stream it, and then eventually there was a physical copy right, of it. when you had to like special order a Blu-ray to get it. Yeah. Somewhere, mm-hmm. So yeah. we watched the extended version, which is about four minutes longer. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's been so long since we saw the movie uh, the last time that it right. was kind of hard to, but I think what they did was they, they reincorporated some jokes because we were saying that, you know, it was mm. humorless. Huh. So some of the jokes, which is like, uh, um, Eric, you know, thanks for the water. You know, that is the, yeah, that, that's uh, a new one. That one, I was like, what was the point of that? Oh, I didn't like and that. And you can tell because the cut between that scene yeah. is another scene where those two characters come together. Yes. And you're just like, well, that doesn't make sense. Yep. It, it, so I understand why these, they cut it. It threw the continuity all out of mm-hmm. whack. Yeah. Right. I'm just like, no. wow. Yeah. Didn't need okay. a. Yeah. Like, I, I had an issue with one of his lines that I don't remember in the theatrical is when he's talking to David and David's like, well, we'll wait for the water to go down and then we'll drive over the bridge. And he's like, if we don't do anything now, we'll be dead before then. Mm. And I'm like, okay, you the way you paused made it sound like you said dead by dawn is where you're <laughs> heading with that. <laughs> and his delivery like kind of implied that I'm like, either do it or don't. I don't, you know, I don't like this halfway in joke. But those are those moments that I think we're all cut out. It's like they actually did when you go back and look at it. Because I remember going like, 
the the whole scene with um, Mia, they lock her in the basement, right? And mm. so basically, because you know that from uh, Evil Dead, you yeah. know, the girl in the basement, but that whole, we're going to get mm-hmm. you, that's new, but mm-hmm. it's a callback to the old movie. So right. they're cutting yeah. out the stuff callbacks. that were direct callbacks. What was Na- I don't remember Natalie's line being in the theatrical either um, when her hand is first possessed and she says, give me back my hand. I no. do not remember that's that. That's not there. I'm pretty sure. Because it's a callback. Yeah. And her del- but her, her delivery, delivery was terrible. terrible yeah. So it was yeah. a good thing yeah. they, yeah. they There's cut also it. the mm-hmm. scene where um, uh, Shiloh Fernandez has the chainsaw and he's getting all bloody face that was not in the No, movie. that's because it's showing what happened to the bodies of it. He yes, does yeah. dismember yeah. everybody. That, There's a lot more Shiloh Fernandez in this cut. Yeah. It is more focused focused on him in the later part of the movie, mm-hmm. which I like the theatrical version better. I think I like the theatrical it, version it, it better. It moves It's better pacing. It, yeah. I think it mm-hmm. does, yeah. And it, it, although it does have, like, the violence is extended by a little bit. I think sure. each shot Marginal. has a little but in, bit. in yeah. this movie, when you're extending it a little bit, yeah. what does it add up to within the violence of this movie? Or even the budget, can, like, budget-wise, like, holy shit, like, I want to see like a pie chart breakdown of the budget of this movie and where it all went and like special mm-hmm. like yeah, how much do the like, gallons of blood uh, right. cost this is you a 17 know 17 million dollar movie 16 was spent on blood yeah exactly <laughs> guaranteed yeah well, that's kind of what I mean. When you know the the Shyla Fernandez character is the the surrogate Ash I sure, guess. Yeah. and the whole time I'm like seeing him in this blue shirt I'm like. I mean, I guess they're making him the hero of this movie, but it doesn't really feel like he's Ash-like. I mean, he right. doesn't really have a... I feel like it extends yeah. a lot more in this cut. Yeah. Where you're just questioning that Was more, he supposed to be like Ash? I mean, I know, mm-hmm. like... Well, they're putting him in those scenes, like cutting right. up things, yeah. getting well, the blood I, I know, all over. Right. His personality isn't right. anything. But I right. don't yeah. think they were trying to do right. that. Right, that's what I mean. I was like, yes. I think they knew, like, he does not have the charisma of Bruce no. Campbell. No. So I think they were just like, you know what? We're not trying to be Ash. We're just showing that this is the Ash represented. Sure. It's, it's and they knew that you know? yeah. like, they knew he was going to die. Yeah. So they, I think they know that going This in. is Jane yeah. Levy's movie. Yeah. 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 Sure. They know sure. that. Yeah. But that's what. Which su- is the smart move. Yeah. And it surprised me because, I mean, the movie does kind of have, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, basically it makes the central characters for much of it feel like it is David and Eric. They're the ones who survive, mm-hmm. you know. The girls get possessed. Eric survives everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a so. problem. Eating. That's a problem. I'm glad <laughs> I mean, you pointed that he out gets because in the yeah. head five times with a crowbar, he should be out at that There's point. an extra hit in this version. Is it, oh, yeah. well, great. It really makes a difference. <laughs> but he is, he is, uh, he's, stabbed he's, in he's the an face. Iron Man. He's, mm-hmm. sh- he's with shot, a needle. He, he's stabbed a lot with a, hyper, uh, a, a needle. Um, he's, uh, um, shot with the, the nail gun. Nail gun. He gets shot a lot he's with the nail gun. a shard of glass. With in his chest, glass. yeah. Chest. yeah. They duct tape that uh, up. Nail guns don't do that, by the way. Yeah. I don't know if you all know that. <laughs> as much as we want them to, mm-hmm. because it does feel like a device that should shoot nails yeah. but there are safety devices on those shit where you can't do you that. know that the the one nail gun scene in this movie it was almost shot for shot the same as that nail gun scene in final destination three mm. like even the putting the arm up over the face and it catching it along mm. the hands that, that was exactly yeah. in final destination three it's true though you really do have to have the nail gun up against yeah the right yeah, so gotta push yeah. On it doesn't shoot yeah. like bullets yeah i, I love the idea because again i think we all right. want a nail gun to shoot nails right Every carpenter walked out of that movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, that was it. Do you, think, do you think, so you know how like Neil deGrasse Tyson loves to like science bus oh, movies? Boy. Do you think there's like Would a carpenter version? Carpenter yeah, breakdowns yeah. on YouTube? Yeah. Yes. Like, this is, this this is it. Right. Bob Neal is a rage. Yeah, it's rage. Yeah. Like, this but, okay. old haunted house. But you guys, <laughs> you guys were talking about doing the, the news version of this because yeah. you guys point carpenter out all version. the, this, yeah. 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 this is the carpenter version. Yeah. So. I would love that to have different people of different specialties realities and they're be, yep. coming and break down Point and be out the like, errors. Yeah. Ah, just, that wouldn't work. I so desperately want to see Bob Vila saying this with his wife and he just gets up and she's like, Bob, not again. <laughs> <laughs> he just leaves. Do you think he thought Amityville Horror was going to be just like a This Old House episode? Probably. Like, oh my God, they're restoring this beautiful mansion he on did not, Ocean Avenue. So it's just like, what about yeah. the house? Yeah. He didn't pay attention to any of the movie. He's no, just looking at the, the restoration that he He's like, oh my God, those yeah. arch windows. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. We could we could flip this house for a yeah. bunch. I, I'm just not realizing how much in common I have with Bob Vila. Yeah, <laughs> so much. Where's our like? It's got to be like a college humor sketch or something, right? But there's got to be like a house flipping for like famous haunted houses yeah. sketch oh, out yeah. there, right? You <laughs> know, yeah. I yeah. mean. Uh, Sean, you said it, this old haunted house. Yeah, like, yeah. This has yeah. To, it's got to be out there. If this, this is not an, an SNL skit, it's got to be. Yeah. Like, yeah. Make sure Somebody's you send me done a check. it. I mean, yeah. Throw the Somebody's copyright out, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's done it. Copyright 2000, 2017. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you're retroactively oh, wow. copyrighted. Wait, wait, wait. What year are we? Are we doing it then? <laughs> yes, we, we go back were. to 2012. 2012. Yeah. Copyright 2023 Saturday Night Freak Show. We're to update this that shirt. We're pass. missing a few years now. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah, I know. It's running. Well, um, I guess as you were saying, he ends up dying. Like uh, Mia is sidelined through the entire movie, locked in the basement. She it is. feels like, right? And we're like, okay, we get cutaways to her being demonic and whatnot. Yeah, but after, uh, so he figures out, like, you know, well, we can break this spell by bar- live burial. You can, you don't have to you burn can, them, right? They give three options: uh, live burial, burning, and uh, what was the other chop one? The motherfucker. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> chop the motherfucker. <laughs> Dismemberment. So you have these options, which. Uh, in the extended cut, he does go through with his other bodies. He chops one up, he burns mm-hmm. a few of them, and then he's going to say burial for Mia. Yeah, I do um, like the the notes in the book. It's like burn the bitch and chop. Yeah, the yeah. yeah, yeah. I like it. L- it's just like here's a long version, and mm-hmm. here's just the basic version. It's of the what TLDR you do. version, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I guess that was kind of cool, Skip right? Skip to recipe, but yeah, yeah seriously, yeah. I well, love it, it. The movie actually got to a point where it was like he. Like all the deadites were dead. Mm. He, um, you know, buried her. Her heart stops. He digs her back up and he uses the battery and he jerry rigs a you know Some defibrillator yeah, yeah. and brings her back to life. And it's like this could be the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh you yeah, know? yeah. And you're like, okay, because basically we survived the night of the evil dead and we brought you know the sister back and it's a happy ending. And it was like, but then we're gonna keep going for like right. another fifteen minutes. Right. If you thought you went through a lot. <laughs> just wait yeah, yeah. until the last it 10 minutes of this movie saves insanity for the <laughs> end of this movie which is great I never <laughs> yeah. thought that I would see a movie I mean like where blood rains from the sky you know like I mean so it was much. it was just soaking everything like it starts with her looking uh, uh, Mia looking up at the sky and the blood starts raining down into her eyes yeah. and everything mm-hmm. just how oh, how exhausted would you feel I've, after a day of filming I this feel movie? so bad for her She's oh. she she's soaking wet, wet. Yeah. soaking wet throughout yeah, this entire she, movie. I remember Bruce Campbell said he got to, you know, like he had a hand in, in the casting and, and he told her, you know, it's like you're going to be put through like some of the most hellacious shit that you've ever done in your life, but it'll be remembered. Yes. You know, for, you're going to be part of Evil Dead. Yes. Because right. he's gone through it. You know, yeah. like how many times he's yeah. like, yeah. Right. Uh, you're going to be cold. You're going to be hot. You're, it's it's going to be, be up your nose. You're going to be sneezing <laughs> yeah. it for a week. Yeah. But she was all in for it, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. you know what you're getting into? It's mm-hmm. Evil Dead, oh, yeah. I suppose, which is what we have to look forward to the new one. Mm-hmm. But even before she gets possessed, they're making her walk around in circles in the yeah, rain. Yeah, like, yeah, God, yeah, can yeah, you yeah. give her one scene where she can be indoors and dry, please? She's like, you know, when she's no longer wearing that Michigan sweater, she's wet the entire movie. Yep. Uh, like it's yeah. it's bad. Uh, but this is great. Having uh all five of the uh the 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 friends are killed eventually mm-hmm. and the the place burns down. I think David even turns into a, a dead eye briefly well, on uh, fire. You said they're all dead, but we get I mean he buries her. Uh she does end up coming back mm-hmm. to life. Mm-hmm. And so she okay, with he all buries the, her all with the, the plastic bag on her head, and she's right. monologuing cool at this him. This is a ooh, ooh, it's creepy looking. It's don't good. like it. Don't. No. And I'm just, Love it. But I'm also like, God, this actress had to be buried. She went and had a bag over her head. Like, no, like yeah, I, this was, this I'm guessing will, they had like I love uh, Jane Levy. Oh sure. Well, you can see it's open at the bottom. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not sealed. Well, they probably no, had like a tube somewhere. Oh, yeah, there yeah. Or something. For safety, had it is effective. It's creepy as hell, but it looks horrendous for her. She can suck it into her mouth. Yes. Things so you gotta leave a little bit there. Yeah. Yes, my claustrophobia that. was well. Yeah, Ooh. and like the way the light when the lightning strikes and it kind of like highlights the dirt around her and her face goes dark mm-hmm. and then it reverses. It was really yeah. cool camera. Yeah, yeah one of those there, shots, but... the the right overhead of her. I mean, it's very yeah. creepy looking. Um, but yeah. then yeah, she's miraculously restored. All she the survived. damage that she went through is gone. And all is better. All is safe. All is but it turns out Lou Taylor Pucci. Lou Taylor Pucci, the man who will not die. Yep. Is it comes a demon. back. Those scenes were creepy too because yeah. he just like stares. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, just the way they Super shot him. Creepy. I'm like, this is good horror yes. movie. Yeah, yeah. staging cinematography. Mm-hmm. Every, yeah, everything does look good in this. Movie. Yeah, it's, it's really creepy. creepy. Very it's well effective. Shot. It's like you know what you're doing, yeah. Fede Alvarez. It doesn't feel like team. there's anything really wasted in as far as them shooting this mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. Like, oh. Mm. But this leads into, uh, so with all five of them dead, that means the abomination will come to Earth. And right. the abomination is a naked version of Mia, I think, the possessed version that we've mm-hmm. seen through right. the entire it's like movie. outside her body. Yes. Mm-hmm. Crawls up through the ground after the yep. sp- the blood-soaked ground mm-hmm. and the blood rain. 
and chases her around the property. They get a lot of mileage out of this scene. They so do. There's they like go, they're going through I, tunnels underneath, up into in between uh, walls, in right? The garage. In between wall, they go underneath the ground, yep. up into the shed mm-hmm. where we get our. And she chainsaw. reaches for the katana and then says <laughs> no thanks and reaches instead for the, mm-hmm. the chainsaw. Then she's going in between walls where she gets attacked by oh, the machete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, like, we're saws we're through her knee. Oh, oh, knees oh, on. Least, this is the one that bothers me the most. This whole movie is that because you can see the meat moving. Yeah. And then it gets stuck on the drag back, and they yeah. yank it. Yeah, yeah. but it's also it when all four of us groaned out yeah. loud. Yeah, <laughs> out of the rest of them we were watching, this one made us go, "Oh, yeah." yeah. Well, man, there's a lot of that. I mean, the guy getting the 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 one that like disturbed me was the hypodermic needle oh, to the just, eye. Oh, She's just, just bashing stabbed. onto the oh, his God. glasses, and you're like, right? And then little horrible. ones, but you know, he feels every single one of them. Yeah, and yeah. it leaves and he pulls the, the needle out. in under yeah. right underneath his eyeball that he has to pull. Oh, so gross. It's there's an accentuation on pain. I suppose, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. but that's yeah. also the mark of like you know this is a good manipulator, a film director, right? Like yeah. he knows you're going to remember and feel like every single one of these moments. Yeah. I think that's why he's a good choice for this movie. I, I you think know. so. Um, then we get a, ra- I mean, then uh, a raining blood chase around the. Uh, the she the, has to pull her own arm off. There's a, a yeah. chase under the oh. car. The car gets flipped over onto her hand. But mm-hmm. she then has to pull off. Just like Ash. So yep. gross. Yep. And then that and then, moment when she shoves her stump onto the, <laughs> yes. yep. onto the chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. We're waiting for that moment. Yep. Yep. She yep. does chainsaw the abomination she, in the it's, face. It's, it's, it's right in the mouth. Yes, through the back I've of the always head. loved, mm-hmm. like, the way this is shot, like, her running it in and out of her yeah. head. Yeah. And then like moving and it her, up and down. Yes, and her sticking with it for that wide shot. Like it shot. really does look like someone's struggling it, with like it, chopping up a tree or yes. something. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It really does. She's moving with it and then she ends up sawing her right in half. Yeah. yeah. And then the abomination sinks back. Yeah. yeah. And it's pretty good. Swallowed it's up by good. the earth. Yep. You know? Back in where you came from. Um, the, um, the director's cut includes a mid credit scene. Which I don't mm-hmm. like. Well, the reason that I didn't like it was because it feels like the, the exact, like I was actually thinking tonight, like who picks her? I can't remember. You see her walking along the road and then she mm-hmm. collapses and a car pulls up and somebody picks her up. And when it first happened, I'm like, it's going to be Bruce Campbell. Right. Yeah. We all right. Yeah. That. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 And uh, then it's, you know, it goes in on her eyes sleeping in the back seat and then they open, but she's human. So the big shock is, okay, she's not she's a fine. demon. Yeah. If we expected it to be a demon. Yeah. Ha, 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 she's right. not. But I was like tonight when I was like, yeah, doesn't this end with like uh, Lance Henriksen picking her up? <laughs> and that's Jennifer's body has like yep. the exact same scene. Yeah, it does. Probably why they cut this. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I Plus don't know. it doesn't add anything. No, it no, really doesn't. It doesn't. No, uh, you know, it doesn't give any, no, like, if he, any of the No, if it was going to be Bruce that adds something, if it was going to be that her eyes were like the demon eyes that adds something. But sure. yeah. she's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't get it. it no. I think. Well, I think. Also, uh, they shot it just so they could go either way. I think, like, yeah, if they decide to add the eye shit, they could do it. I suppose. Yeah. Also, like, I wouldn't want to be alive after this. <laughs> how, how are you going to explain? That's a lot. That's, yeah. well, Any of you, this? Yeah, right, you're going you, to jail, right? Like, if you think about it, you're just like, how do I explain the missing uh, all these yeah, people? Does yeah. anybody go back there? Yeah. Is that the sequel? Like, do to they, me, does this she is, have to take yeah. them back there? This is not or a good. We ending. may find out in uh, Evil Dead Rise. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, that book Maybe. survived. Somehow. Maybe because I'm like, this is not a good ending for no. her. Like, she's, no. she's I don't want to survive this. Oh, see, I would be interested to see. Do you think is Jane Levy going to show up in Evil Dead Rise? That'd be cool. So, but I doubt it. I don't think so. But I would like so to she's see not a, our new Ash. No, no I would I like wish. to see a sequel with her based yeah. off of this. Dealing Same. with this and all that stuff. I think that could be interesting. Um the thing one of the things that's notable about the end uh the cut, you know, post credit scene is that the poster comes from there. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Her walking along the road. Now, I mean, you remember the marketing for this movie. Mm-hmm. What did you call it? The most Intense uh, something movie you will yeah, ever see. Horrifying movie these. you'll ever yeah. see. Yeah. Or something like that. I like that because it's challenging the it's, audience. It's, this yeah. is like, oh, right? you think so? <laughs> it really does get into people and just like, oh, we'll see you yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> but it did that. Like, I remember, like, uh, all the great, you know, movie trailers of the 1970s, and they kind of tapered off in the 80s, but for horror movies, would basically challenge you, like, are you up to the experience <laughs> of seeing this movie? Right. Yeah. Subjecting yourself to that. We've kind of got away like from that. that. 
Evil Dead's like the only movie that really yeah. d- has done that recently. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, saying like, but it but it really ba- the rel- relentlessness really backed it up in this movie. Well, yeah. do you remember they're like the bloodiest movie you've ever seen? I'm like, like, what? Yeah. And then you see like, yeah, it's but it, yeah. Oh. Okay. A, a lot of people are mad though because they think they cheated that by having it rain blood, and I was like, well, but I, I mean, d- I'm not bothered by that, no. you know. Yeah, like, but a lot of people no. were bothered by that, so. Yeah. But, but it was a bloody movie. I mean, like in yeah, the really trailer, bloody, yeah. I remember yeah. the unrated trailer showed a lot of blood her, hidden faces in there. Yeah, and her cutting her yeah. tongue in yep. half, which is just yes. gross. Yeah, so gross. Um, I remember there was a a campaign uh, on YouTube or something, which was like submit your reaction videos to watching the mm-hmm. Evil Dead trailer. There's all these you know people watching it freaking out because mm-hmm. it's the most disgusting thing that they've ever seen. So I guess like I mean, it's are we good at a point can, where it's you can the, use reactions as in your yes. advertising? Is Evil Dead 2013 a litmus test for people now? It's like I saw a fucking movie back in in 2013. <laughs> it was the craziest, most brutal movie I've I ever seen in my life. It is a good way, I think, to get to. Uh, no horror people. It's like, what do you think about Evil yeah. Dead 2013? It's a loaded question. And, and to hear mm-hmm. the, how how they received it is a good uh, barometer. Yeah, for, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, uh, for who what they are in their soul. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> we've seen <laughs> Hellraiser and so Cannibal you, Holocaust. You're saying Evil Dead like 2013 is a window to the soul. I yeah. think so. Yeah. And she will eat your soul. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know the new one uh, was considered for a streaming service, but they elected to put it in theaters Good. after yeah. some test screening. So, mm. well, okay. anyone who's seen the trailer for the new one, there are two scenes in that new trailer that, if you look at, you know how YouTube shows you the most like watched part of the trailer. There's two. Yeah. There's two spikes, and I feel like everyone knows if you've seen the trailer what two gags those are but evil dead rise man it just based on the trailer alone looks brutal yeah i'm down. so yeah that looks fun but i mean i'm down <laughs> for it but I'm, I'm down for it because i know that like it's sam raimi robert tabbert and bruce yeah. campbell are producing this and yeah. as stewards of this series it seems like they do know like they know what the audience is after this you know? is the perfect horror <laughs> franchise right there hasn't been a bad movie yet oh yeah i was fingers gonna, crossed yeah, yeah. i'm gonna say they haven't really yeah I mean, I think Evil Dead has been the most successful one. Yeah, if we're doing if we're doing franchise math, there yeah. hasn't been a bad one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Evil Dead is one of the best ones. Everything else is a cult classic yeah. at this point. Mm-hmm. So. And then the series was well was regarded. Amazing, well yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, bravo. Uh, Bruce Campbell is always threatening to come back <laughs> yeah. to these things. So no, yeah. he, now he's retired the character. He said the end of Evil Dead, the final season of, of Evil a- Dead. He was, of he Ash vs. Evil Dead? Or no, yeah. no, no, no. Oh. Uh, it was I the video game. Things. Oh, the video game. Oh, yeah. Video yeah. Game. The video game? Yeah. He said that was, yeah. he was officially retired. Colin, have you retiring. played the video game? There's like four of them, but there's a ver- there's a new one. Yeah. A new there's one, the I think, came out one, last yeah. year. I figured you'd, this would be like it's, uh, automatic It's mostly buy. an online game, I think. Uh, it's almost like Jason. Asymmetrical yeah. multiplayer. Yep. Yeah, Friday the 13th. Yep. It's a survival yeah. on game like that. Uh, okay. Yeah. But That's it looks fun. Uh, Storyline mode would have been better, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, but I mean, how many? They've been doing Evil Dead games since the original <laughs> Xbox, I think, right? I mean, isn't there I like think uh, so, yeah. yeah. Evil Dead the game, yeah. Evil Dead Boomstick. I don't even know. Rise Boomstick of the, Edition. Yeah, Rise of the well, something. No, that may have been a fifth edition of the movie. That's yeah, the yeah. Army of Darkness DVD. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's that's a good. lot of Evil Dead out there, and so far they're they're killing it. Yeah, yeah, All good right. for them. Well, um, I guess that, that brings us to the end of the movie. I think I've so. seen Igor lurking. Wipe in the, the back. blood off of you. <laughs> Get ready for your review. Yep, he's got a very uh, very hefty mailbag. Ooh, today. he's got a hefty there, sack so. today. Yep. All right. That's <laughs> See, I did that for you, Holly, because I knew. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna. I knew you have a comment about the hefty sack. We're gonna tell I you whether do. or not you should watch uh, Evil Dead in 2013. But first, we're gonna read some of your mail, and we're gonna have to bring Igor over here to so we can read it. So, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. See, even he said, hefty sack. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's like, he agreed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did you hear me? He's like, ugh. That meant hefty sack. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I still looked it up sorting the Igor hieroglyphics. Wow, that was a very full sack. It was a very full sack. <laughs> um, somebody cut that out. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I, want, I want that every time Michaela sends a message on Messenger. That was a full sack. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> A very hefty sack. <laughs> All right. Hang on. Hang on. I, know you're, I know you're stretching for me. Oh, my so God. No like, kidding. This is a... We will, stretch, the, we, yeah. I will, we will stretch that sack for you. Mm-hmm. We promise. 
<laughs> We're sack talk when we get in while Colin's scrolling. The sack can only get so big, Colin. Yeah. What are we doing here? Okay. All right. So let's, about to leave. it's a bulging sack. <laughs> let's read it because I'm not going to be able to find this. All right. So about tonight. Oh, first of all, I suppose we should tell the good folks at home how mm. they can write into us on Facebook. Fill Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. <laughs> uh, on Twitter. At Sad Freak Show. Uh, at Sack can, Freak Show. At, sa- at Sack. <laughs> at Sack Freak Show. They can email us directly. Saturday Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Evil Dead Kryptonian Orphan writes in and says, Possessed me appearing out of the basement trap door haunts my dreams. Such a brutal, disgusting, unrelenting, disturbing, and absolutely perfect film. And he says a fun fact each of the characters' names, David, Eric, Mia, Olivia, and Natalie spells out demon. There it is. Love that. Uh, Chuck Oblivion says, I saw this. <laughs> Chuck Oblivion. <laughs> we have so many action stars that write in. I love it's amazing. We really do. <laughs> Well, Chuck says, I saw this at a local film fest as a special screening with an evil dead loving friend. We didn't know what to expect. Definitely didn't expect it to be so cold and brutal. Mm. We left with huge grins on our faces. Yeah. Chuck Oblivion. It is a cold movie. That's for sure. Yeah. Right. I feel mm-hmm. I felt cold. Uh, Simon Carter says, I was surprised so much. I like the movie. I thought changes, updates that they made were smart and it's a well-made movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mark Zidane says, hell yeah. I've been waiting for you guys and gals to do this movie for a while. One of the few remakes, reboots that actually holds up with the originals. I remember seeing it twice in the theaters. I met up with a date the second time who walked out of the theater during the self-mutilating bathroom scene and went home. Oh, that's, it was early. Uh, she walked out early. That's all you need. Like, it's a good lit. <laughs> this is, yeah, it she is. she walked out, you don't need her. Yep. It's not, it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't, it wasn't meant, meant to, to be. be. No. Uh, Richard Kratzer says, this is my single favorite remake, reboot, remake, or remake, well, whatever the hell you want to call it. <laughs> Dare lot. I say that it's even more than Raimi's. I think it will. I like it even more than gotcha. Raimi's. I, think it will. I, can, I can understand that. I also understand that, yes. Um, I don't think you can have a, ba- a wrong favorite Evil Dead movie. Right. Does that make sense? For Anyone you pick. No. Yes. Yeah, for, yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. a true statement. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, There's Travis, no wrong answer. Yep. Yeah. Travis Legler says uh, Bruce Campbell wrote in his book, Hail to the Chin, Further Confessions of a B Movie Actor, that many fans thought the movie was close, but no cigar. That is, uh, That was a bit melodramatic and not as much fun as the original, and I would agree. Nothing really stood out to me or made super strong impression. I did like that Mia started out possessed and then came back at the end fighting the evil. I think for Evil Dead movies, I will stick with Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. I hope you all enjoyed this, and I'm looking forward to hear what you think. Nothing stood out to you? <laughs> I Nothing? I feel like Bruce Campbell only talks to like the fans that have negative opinions sometimes. Bruce you know? Campbell really loves himself. Mm. I have a feeling in, in his movies and his It'll never measure up to his movies. I gotcha. think so. I mean, I, give, well, him, the, he's, give but, him the credit. I know, but he's putting it back on the fans, saying fans were unhappy with this yeah, movie. Which, no, no, which, no, 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 no. I think that's, a, that that's a cop out. Yeah. Yeah, don't do yeah. that. Don't say fan. That's like saying... People are saying, yeah, that I'm just like well, so many people. people. Like, because like, I remember they, he was. I mean, they, like he really did take it seriously. I mean, like oh, yeah. you know, he. I don't know that Bruce Campbell is like a huge horror movie like fan like we are, so. right? No, uh, he's just a big Evil Dead fan. Yeah, yeah. but he knows <laughs> he knows what the appeal yeah. is of the movies, and so that's why I think when they selected Fede Alvarez, like he was kind of like, okay, this guy is going to do what we wanted to do. So I think you're hearing a little bit of like. Well, you know, we tried to give you like the thing that you know, right? And who knows when this quote is taken from? This could be a ten-year-old quote. Well, it said it's from his book. It's from his book. When did the book? Well, whenever the book came out. Um, But no, Sean, it's like you know when people online say. So a lot of people have been asking me. No, no, no one. That's not true. You had a subject you wanted to talk about. Yeah, just own it. Just own it. Don't don't say a lot of people have been asking because that's not true. Uh, Adam Kaler writes in and says the pressure and expectations to do a new Evil Dead movie without Ash leading must have been insane. I wonder what possessed them. Uh, nice. He says it does seem like the filmmakers loved the franchise and were determined and succeeded to bring a serious and gory entry to the screen. That's all well and good, but I think the best part was Jane Levy as Mia. She respected what came before and gave for the role her own feel. Evil Dead did such an awesome job of making you feel every cut, slice, and pin pull of the characters. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't cringe so much until I saw Cats, the movie, much later. <laughs> Wait, the butthole version? 
Yeah. Uh, no, right. The before they, yeah. before they the put them out and put them in again. Yeah. Let's not put butthole in Jane cut. Levy did an amazing <laughs> job. Jane Levy's great. She did She made me interested job. in Jane Levy in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Whitaker says the Evil Dead franchise is one of the few I know that can almost completely go away for long stretches and somehow manage to deliver oh. amazing entertainment when it comes mm. back. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Because of that is also why I can never fully write off any remake or con- continuations yep. of popular IP. Yeah, agreed. I get that. For sure. Agreed. For Some sure. do it more successfully than others. Yeah, uh, uh, Evil Dead being one of them. <laughs> yeah. But we. Oh, all right. Okay. That, no, that's a whole. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I can't get in. Uh, Apple Leva <laughs> says it has to be one of the most brutally graphic horror movies in the last ten to fifteen years, and damn satisfying. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, last week we watched a movie called Blood and Black Lace. Mm. Scraw seven ninety three says Scraw. I love me some Bava. I first saw Blood and Black Lace on the Turner Classic Movies channel during the pandemic. I went on a Bava binge and purchased all the Blu-rays Kino Lorber put out. Highly recommend Bava's Whip and the Body, a film in which they actually dubbed Christopher Lee. What? Oh, how do you dub? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's all right. Well, now I'm curious. Well, they okay. dubbed, they dubbed everybody. The Italians have no, <laughs> they don't care. No, no. They don't care who you are. They're, they're like, going to we'll do whatever dub, they yeah, want. We'll dub you. We don't care. Uh, Novato Judoka writes in and says, I hadn't seen this, but as soon as the bongos played and I saw the look of the film, I already knew that I would add this in the rotation for Noir Vember. There's always room for more giallo. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, the, I, love Noir, the, I like Noir Vember. That's <laughs> well, I love the, see, we had I worked at a place where I think it was taken by uh, Turner Classic Movies, Noir Vember. We, had, oh, so we, couldn't, we couldn't use it for our mm-hmm. uh, our monthly thing, so we end up uh, noir to die for. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a Not lot. Bad. There's so much noir shit. People, love, old people, right? love noir yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's they're cheap <laughs> it's as shit crazy. too. You know. Yeah. Uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called Down, but it yeah. might the shaft. Shaft. the shaft wherever you saw it. Karate Warrior Two says, "I just want to know um, how Michael Ironside can receive the love he deserves from the film community." He's just the best bad guy. <laughs> he, he is I mean, great. But he, he does have love from the horror yeah. from oh, the yeah. film like community, doesn't love, he? Yeah. 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 But is he still going? Mm, I think he died last. I bet year. you he got. I bet you he I got left so. out of the in memoriam oh, at the Oscars. Maybe. I bet no, money he did. It feels like he died. A he um, champion. I mean, he's. A, I know, you know, but the Academy is notorious at I not know. including genre people in that. You know. And he eventually went to like movies like Turbo Kid. And so he was, you know, they would hire him because <laughs> his, of his Kid. status as a cult uh, actor. Um, Sean's looking that up, but I think that he passed. I could be wrong. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, okay. Thank God, Michael. Seventy-three Ironside. years old. Well, a Canadian at that. <laughs> yep, you can cast him in your next movie. Bravo. Thank you, Michael Ironside. Looking good. Keep doing movies. We love you. All right. B. Shaw Foolery said Naomi Watts had that excellent "I need money" actors face during the <laughs> entire movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her wardrobe was very two thousand one in that movie too. Uh, Brett Williams gives us a science report. Oh, science reporter Brett Williams. Uh, he says this was a tougher rocket launcher science report. A as down, aka the shaft, is not listed on the IMFDB Internet Movie Firearms database. So I had to go by the picture we posted to try and identify what type of weapon prop they used. And cross referencing photos, it appears to be a prop of the General Dynamics FIM-92 Stinger Man Pads. That stands for Man Portable Air Defense System. Nice. This is a real thing. With the IFF, which is Identify Friend or Foe Antenna, Fold it up. I wasn't aware they were u- issuing anti-aircraft missiles to police departments or the FBI. <laughs> yeah, no but kidding. But you learn something new elevator every operators. day. All I'm hearing is you shouldn't fire this five feet away from your target. Yeah, That's yeah. all I'm hearing from But that. thank you for your research. Yeah, yes. Well, he, he went on. There's actually more to this <laughs> okay. in our comments. So uh, read it on Facebook. Uh, yeah, because he also um, calculated, because I think there was, I said something. Did he do effect. math on the angle and distance? And well, yeah, he's got that too, but uh, oh no, no. <laughs> Uh, there's permanent deafness and stuff like that, but you got to oh, read it yeah. on, in the Facebook comments. But okay. in one of the other comments, he calculated the amount of movies I could store in my brain. No, you personally, based or on him? based on the what Johnny Mnemonic said, you could store gotcha. in it, and he mathed it out. Nice. Oh. So you got to find oh, out yeah. how oh, many a movies full science report yeah. can Colin fit in his brain? How <laughs> oh, much of my brain interested. have I used? <laughs> uh, that's on our Facebook. Uh, I'm page. quite interested because we have to have hit a limit at some point. You got to be forcing. A limit more, does not exist. Or have we? <laughs> yeah, I, oh, for, I, I forgot Action USA entirely. So you know, <laughs> yeah, a, a movie we watched like five months ago. So my remember. my memory I card is very. Full. I forget most of what we watched. Well, we definitely appreciate those science reports from Brett Williams. Brett Williams, science reporter. Uh, 
the week before that, we watched Scream 6. We did. Uh, Maurice said, uh, from what I heard, ah, only you <laughs> and Mark Kermode, the film critic, are truthful about Scream 6, yes. which jumped the shark in the worst way possible. <laughs> Makes no sense. And people getting hurt to the point of death, but still being able to do their taxes. Yep. No <laughs> sense. To think that there are many people out there that think that that Scream 6 is better than Scream 3 destroys me, Ugh. but whatever. We're in the Fast 9 era of Scream. We are. Yeah, we that are. is a great we analogy. We yeah. are. Bravo. Yeah. Bra- who was that? That was uh, Morris or Maurice. 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 Yeah. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Maurice. That's a yes. great review. Uh, and Joey Bly says, I was a little worried that this would be recommended when I saw this episode pop up because I stopped long ago at Scream 3. See, mm. see, it see, I hear, four. Lot, I hear a lot of Scream 3 <laughs> know, going we, we on. Uh, scream 4 I also. Just, They're I saying love, they stopped. That doesn't mean it was let's, good. Let's, that let's, means let's it made say, them give up I on the franchise. I keep making Scream movies just so the love of Scream 3 keeps going on. That's how I feel about Scream 4. That's all I want. That's how I feel about Scream 4. I think we have to we have to uh, elevate Scream Three before we get to Scream Four. So I think mine's going to come. I, I mean, it's looking like the better legacy sequel but I think, right now. But I yeah. think those are the two that are yeah. going to keep going yeah. up. The more they make yep. movies, yep. so woo. Yeah, kind of like uh, yeah. You know, some of those earlier that, Halloweens look better. Uh, yeah. That yeah. franchise just keeps bringing its average score down yep. with every movie that comes uh, out. Yep. That's why they're going to have to grade on a curve. Stop. Gonna stop doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, they never, never will. money. Yep, because this was the highest grossing one I think of the ever. It made a bajillion dollars. But <sighs> we'll know how that was taken when the next movie comes yep. out, mm-hmm. as um, horror movies have shown us. Now we're gonna tell you if you should watch Evil Dead 2013. <laughs> You can go first. What did you think about 2013's Evil Dead, the remake of Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead from 19... 82. 82. 82. Yeah. Um. So at the end of 2020, I did a letterbox oh. list of the what I thought were the best horror movies of the decade. So 2010 to 2020. Uh-huh. And my number one was Evil Dead 2013. Bravo. I think it's the best movie what horror movie of that two? decade. Get out. Um, and what puts it over Get Out for me is expectation. Uh, Get Out, we had no baseline sure, of yeah. what to expect, um, whereas expectations were sky fucking high with this movie, and it exceeded them. And I think you can watch this movie as a standalone movie, not knowing anything about the previous Evil Dead movies, and it still works. Um, yeah. I appreciate in the theatrical they cut out a lot of those like callbacks because they didn't add anything to the movie, um, and they really stood out poorly this time. But this is my first time watching it since I saw it in theaters. Damn. Um, and this is my first time seeing the director's cut. And man, a lot of that stuff stuck with me. Like, I think that's why I haven't rewatched it. It's just because a lot of it is still in there, you know? Oh, yeah, you'll remember uh, this movie. Yes. Um, I think this is probably the goriest movie I've ever seen in theaters. Like, new movie. I mean, not like a retrospective, but like, because like, I've seen Cannibal Holocaust in theaters. That's pretty gory. But like, this I think is the... Pound for pound, probably. Yeah, this is like the goriest movie I've ever seen in theaters. And I remember seeing it in a pretty full theater, too. And people were disgusted to the point of like, silence, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, it was eerily quiet in the theater. There was a lot some disgusted sounds at certain points. But um, I like that there is like no real jump scares in this movie. There's, no, that's you know, um, that's great because yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot of moments where there could have been. It feels like they're is, going to. Yeah, they are. There's just a lot of camera movement to uh, to reveal yeah. that just lets it being horrifying by itself. I like the the closest. I think they probably get to a jump scare is when Olivia closed the medicine cabinet, but she sees her mouth all cut yeah. open like it's going to be in a few minutes. And I thought that was effective, but it, it wasn't like there was a loud sting of music to make you jump yeah. or anything. It just played out normally. Uh, it, I mean, Jane Levy has got a face for horror. She's got like those exaggerated Disney features that she can stretch. Eyes. Yeah, she can like stretch her face and contort it in really interesting ways. And like, I was thinking about that scene of her on the bottom of the bunk bed where she's mm. like panting so hard she can barely get the words out. And it looks like her eyeballs are going to pop out of her head. And mm. that's just, I want to see her and um, Jennifer Carpenter in a movie together because they both have those weird, <laughs> crazy, she can contort. You just call it eyeballs. Th- yeah, make them possessed sisters or something because Jennifer Carpenter can naturally contort and all mm-hmm. that stuff and they can do all sorts of weird shit together. It'd be great. Um, you got I mean, if you haven't seen it, what, what have you been waiting 10 years for? I mean, you know, it's it's always been there. And I think that when people ask you how you feel about it, they're always cautiously like, so what do you think about the remake? Because no one wants to be the first one to say they loved it. But then once you break like that ice, then everyone's like, oh, my God, it was so good. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it's great. I've always been impressed by it. I've always loved it. I, I'm sad that like the rest of the actors, their careers didn't really take off. Um, yeah. The only one I didn't really like was Natalie, but she also had like nothing to do. She had what, like four lines in the whole movie. Yeah. Like she didn't have much to do, but I thought everyone else was pretty good, but Jane Levy was the only one that really got anything out of this. And I love that she sticks with horror and sticks with Fede Alvarez. She's great in the Don't Breathe movie. I haven't seen the sequel, so... Um, but I want to see her do more genre stuff like this, and I want Fede Alvarez to get back to horror movies and not shitty book adaptations. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely recommend it. Colin, what did you think? Hold on. Uh, director's cut or theatrical cut? Uh, I would say theatrical, I think. Okay. Um, it's not a huge difference, but it's... It just doesn't add anything either. Yep. I, I don't want to hear that give me back my hand line again. That was bad. <laughs> just cut it off. Yeah. Colin. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, I guess I, I, I look at this movie in two ways. There was a wave of uh, horror movie remakes that swept through theaters in the 2000s. This came toward the end of that cycle, I think. But I think it's one of the best of them. I mean, it's a, I, like, I really like the Hills Have Eyes remake. Yes. I've um, been thinking about that movie lately. Yeah, I mean, I really like Ring. I really yeah. liked um, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, even though it's a very different movie than uh, George Romero's. But uh, yeah, I mean, I put this up there like this is as good as like, well, I mean, it's in company with like The Thing or The Fly or The Blob, you mm -hmm. know, those ones that we really, you know, or The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the ones that like took the original, which the original is still great, but modernized it and updated it and brought something more to it. It's just, it's a relentlessly, I think, you know, Michaela, you're right. I can't think of anything else that is that just like hardcore gory movie. I guess that's what you know. Even when it came out in 2013, that was what was kind of the thrill of going to see it was like, you know, they don't do this anymore. And I was, I remember sitting there going like, wow, the MPAA is like asleep at the wheel. Or, yeah. Or we're How did they miss this? Different, yeah. you know, like they don't care. I mean, I thought uh, the devil's rejects was another one that mm. I was surprised when I saw that in theaters, that that got by mm -hmm. as not an yeah. NC 17 right. or something. And that's I thought this four, was, and that's got far more uh, nudity, violence crossover. Yeah. Than this and does, lots of fucks which, too. Yeah. This is more that um, just practical graphic violence but that's what it feels like also it feels like it's a practical effects movie and you know mm -hmm. i mean i'm gonna be told that it's not but it sold me on it and mm -hmm. it looks believable you got people sawn in it i mean it's just it's a it's a, a horrifying movie and i guess mm -hmm. that's i didn't expect at the time that evil dead would go back and be like a straight up hardcore horror movie mm -hmm. and that's what i got out of this and uh yeah, I, I, I was impressed enough by it that I've been following uh, Fede Alvarez's career afterwards. Uh, Jane Levy, like you said, I think exactly the same thing. She mm -hmm. has a face that works depending on how they light it mm -hmm. in all of these, uh, you know, scenes that she's in. She's good. Everybody's good. That Technically, I think it's a, a very well-made movie. I mean, is it high art? I mean, for a horror movie... It's a yeah. fucking horror movie. You can and frame that's, that yeah, I mean, mid chainsaw. Oh, yeah. In front of oh, the yeah. Cabin well, on fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a that's great, a, ooh, great mm -hmm. cinematography. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I always see horror movies like this as you're buying a ticket for a ride. Did you get what you were you thrilled? Mm -hmm. Did you get what you bought uh, your ticket for? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I would recommend uh, Evil Dead. Holly, what'd you think? Yeah. I. Oh, I, wait. Uh, well, theatrical. Ah. Theatrical cut. Theatrical cut. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, I agree with everything you both said. This, this movie is, it, it, it exceeded expectations. You know, I don't usually have much faith in a remake and I saw this and I was like, holy shit, mm -hmm. <laughs> this was a spectacle. This was something else. I think what made it for me is that I didn't miss Bruce Campbell mm. because I was, I was entertained enough by everything else. You know, like, always love Ash, always love Bruce Campbell, but I didn't need him because there's so much going on in this. There's so much, um, it's, it's brutal. I mean, Jane Levy is just spectacular. She's so, like, I, I was thinking, you mentioned the scene when she's in the bunk bed and she's sitting there. I was like, she's not even, like, in makeup yet, and I'm already freaked out by her, just right. in her acting in that scene. Oh, yeah. It's, it's spectacular. And they give her legitimacy in that stuff. Yeah. She says that... 
it's in this room. Yeah, and it's they go through all so that stuff, scary. and they show that, which is another scare into the movie. Right, they show the ooh, mirror, yeah, and ooh. oh god, it's like this movie is legitimately scary. It's mm-hmm. it's really spectacular. It's not just gory. Um, I, mean, I think people always talk about how it's like the bloodiest movie, and I was like, yeah, it is, but it's also scary. Mm-hmm. Like there's some really creepy imagery, and you know, Colin, I agree with you. It's, it's not that it's high art, but it's high horror. Like it's mm-hmm. it, it's beautiful. It's disgusting. It's it's do it's bright but dark at the same time <laughs> and it's yeah um, i i love that there's there's these moments like you said michaela there's there's scares but they're not jump scares mm-hmm. you know that moment when um eric is standing behind him when he goes back in the cabin yes. and then you see that eric's like come back as a as a demon like that's that's scary mm-hmm. and it's it's a scare but it's not a jump scare there's Ooh. no like intense music it's just scary filmmaking right. and i, so like, I love here. that how do you yeah. feel about that yeah <laughs> and it's like no i hate it i hate everything about it <laughs> um yeah i think this is just a great ride from start to finish the cold open to the bu- just bat shit crazy end i i loved every second and i like that it's you know i like that they didn't go with the happy ending because i remember when i first watched it i was like are we doing a happy ending did brother and sister survive like this is evil dead this is what we're doing <laughs> and then it gets crazy and i was like yes this is what i'm I'm sold 100 percent. i am here for it so yeah i i definitely recommend it i think it's you know michaela i think you're right i don't think there's a bad evil dead out mm-hmm. there i i i love it it's great i definitely recommend it and i agree with you both theatrical we don't really need the director's cut it doesn't add anything so sean take us home uh, Michaela, I agree uh, when you said that. Uh, I mean, you said you haven't watched this since it came out in theaters yeah. and everything. But it's such an impactful movie. Like, it, it stays with you for so long. Plus, you get out of a movie like this, you're like, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And you, it, it exhausts you in a good way. You're just like, holy shit, I saw, like, this was a meal. I like, saw this was an ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, this was a thing. <laughs> Uh, it, it 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 is such a, a, a such a full experience. I think that it really sticks with you. Uh, I mean, everything you guys said. Um, I think it's so. I, I watched it. I think probably like two years ago. Just as an update, I'm just like, is this still good? And I watched it then, and I was like, this is still fucking good. I watched it tonight, still fucking good. Um, this is a horror movie. This is just like uh, like we said, relentless, bloody. Brutal. I like the characters. I think Jane Levy's doing really great stuff. I want to see her in more. Um, I think the writing, and we may have seen it before, but um, the idea of the, you know, a drug drug addict (laughs) trying to withdraw and everything, and that, um, I mean, that being, demons. Literally, you're dealing with your demons. Like, it's that much in this movie. Um, Yeah, it's, uh, this is a great movie. Um, We haven't had a bad Evil Dead movie yet. Um, I'm looking forward to our next one, Evil Dead Rise. Um, but Evil Dead 2013, wow. What a, uh, what will, if it's not thought of now, a classic. An absolute classic um, of the horror genre. Um, I, I, you, you have to see it. You have to see it. And uh, I'll go with the rest of you, theatrical cut. I think the pacing is a little more, especially towards the end, because we get more Shiloh Fernandez um, kind of dealing with everything. But uh, in the theatrical cut, that goes boom, boom, boom. We get to an ending a little faster, and then we get to the craziness a little faster. But either one, I mean, just watch the damn movie. It's fantastic. So I'm definitely recommending 2013's Fede Alvarez's Evil Dead. You know what that means? You have to watch it. You have to watch it. Show approved. So that's the rule. Contractually, you're obligated. You know, I was actually thinking um, brutal bloody movies. There's the Terrifier movies. I've seen those. Oh, I haven't seen those. But no, I don't know if those. I didn't count. make it far into the first one for it. Yeah, out. I mean they're they're very gory and they use a lot of practical effects. They're mean so that spirited would be, movies. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, what I don't. Fire. Yeah, yeah. You know, the good. art, the clown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm good. I don't yeah. need it. They're just no. not well. They're not very tasteful. Movies. No, they don't look like they're well written, yeah. and they're relying on a certain amount of. But they are excess. gross, and they were in theaters. Right. But I think they were maybe were they Fathom events or was it an actual theatrical? I think it was an actual theatrical one. But you could see it in theaters, so those those were gross too. Um. All right, so next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. Holly, what what do we, do we get a palate cleanser after the the blood rain of Evil Dead? What are we watching next week? Well, I feel like since I teased it before oh. and then got really ah. sick from COVID, we have to go back <laughs> okay. to it. Right. Um, so we're gonna actually watch Cellar Dweller. All right, all right. <laughs> this, will, this will be good. This will be a good like. Woof, we need to breathe. Let's watch Cellar Dweller yeah. from what year? Uh, 88 88, okay i think yeah it's a full moon movie 
Am I right? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So there you go. Cellar Dweller next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.